Hey everyone, it is Wednesday, December 10th, 2014. This is Talk To Me Tuesday, number 165. Sorry for the delay. Yesterday morning was an absolutely, totally dark gray day. We had freezing rain in the morning, and I was kind of hoping that maybe things would lighten up, and of course they didn't. So, it started out the same this morning, but it has lightened up enough to allow me to record a video. So here I am. Uh, not too much crafty to share with you, but I will share what I have. First off, the thing I am most proud of to share with you this week is the quilted Christmas countdown wall hanging my daughter and I worked on together. It is com as complete as it's going to be at this time. The only thing that is left to do is to make little hanging loops and purchase a wooden dowel to hang it with. We were hoping to do that Monday, but because it was so cold, just to go to Joanne's, walk across this freezing cold parking lot for one wooden dowel, sorry to say, wasn't good enough. <laughs> so next time I go to Joanne's for more than that, I will pick up the wooden dowel and we will put the hanging loops on and it will be 100% complete. But we are able to use it. It is hanging up. We're using it at the present time. So I am going to stop here and I am going to let you go check out a video real quick of that and I will see you in a few minutes. Okay, I'll be back. Okay, kind of hard to see but this is the finished quilted wall hanging my daughter and I did. I'm actually standing on the stairs going back as far as I can. It's really hard to see. It's that big. So we'll go up closer to it. Um, this is it, starting at the top, working our way across and down. Uh, we've just started putting ornaments on it, as you can see. Sorry if I make anyone seasick. Um, in fact, I'm getting ready to put an ornament on it. Just a couple things I wanted to point out. Um, as you can see, we're holding it up with tax. <laughs> um, I will be putting some hanging loops along the top up there and we'll be using a wooden dowel. It's 36 inches wide. I couldn't tell you the length. Um, I don't know if I showed the backing fabric but it's this really pretty green with, with a leaf pattern on it. I thought that would be appropriate. And these are the little hooks that the ornaments hang on. It's just the little tiny hooks that you use and my daughter has decided we are going in order of color so I just have to hang today's little ornament on there and then tomorrow we'll hang one here on this side and then the next day these two little brown squares will be filled then along the bottom and then the tree they kind of you know, they don't sit level, but... And then the last ornament will go right there. But there it is. We have a snow lady. We have a snowman. We have a Christmas goose. And we have a Christmas bear and a couple other little presents in front of a tree. And these are all counted cross-stitch pieces. So there it is. Sorry, it's kind of hard to see. And I just wanted to point out on the binding, you can see it right here. Um, this is some binding tape, quilted and quilting binding tape I had purchased. And this was before I knew how to measure for binding. And this is the red I had in my stash. And you can see the difference in the two colors. So what I did with the, I cut the fat quarter into two and a half inch wide strips and then I cut the binding into the same length as the um, fat quarter and that was how I pieced together my binding so that it would alternate between the two. So that's it. Oh, there's my door with my snowman, my snowflakes. <laughs> and look, we still have a wreath hanging up there. I have a Easter picture. Yeah, okay. So anyway, that's that. There it is. And I love it. I think it came out really good. Not perfect, but it's perfect for us. Okay, so welcome back. Hope nobody got seasick watching that bit of video there. 
Um, because of the size of the wall hanging, it is really hard for me to be able to show it to you uh, just standing. I was actually standing on my steps. It is in the front hall. Sorry if you hear crinkling. Uh, yeah, um, it is hanging in the front hallway when you walk into my house. So it's kind of hard. I'm standing as far back on the steps as I possibly could trying to get the full picture in. And it wasn't working too well. But um, I will try and get some close-up pictures if anyone's interested. Otherwise, I did some little close-up bits there. So the only thing I didn't mention about that when I was talking about the binding, I'm going to give you a little bit of advice. If you are not the skilled quilter that people like Ofen and Jen and other members of the DTMT family are, do yourself a favor. Do not do the binding when you are tired and in a hurry because you have to get to sleep because you have to work that night. It came to the very end part of the first part of putting the binding on where you bring the two ends together. It does a nice finish before you finish sewing it onto the back and then flip it to the front. And I was just not having any luck. I was getting totally frustrated. And I'm watching the video. I'm saying, I think I'm doing everything right. Obviously, I wasn't. My son said, take a break. Go back to it. I did just that. And I realized what I was doing wrong. So... It's not perfect, like I said. It's perfect for us. It's something we will have, we will use, and we will be able to cherish for many years to come. And because it's a project between my daughter and I, it makes it even more special. So, uh, on with what else I have to share. You'll never guess what that could possibly be. Hmm, let's see. Maybe socks. <laughs> I showed this pair I was working on last week. It is now a complete pair of socks. I believe this is Wildflower. It is in the Hirschner's Afghan yarn, which is a two-ply yarn. Absolutely beautiful colors, once again. So I now have not one, but two pairs of completed socks. I did cast on for the third pair of socks, and we are getting into making the guy socks. And there are more stitches, and there's more length, especially to the leg. So it's going to take me longer to be able to complete it. But I did get one of them done, and here it is. And this is absolutely beautiful. The color is autumn. And it's got some nice orange and green and dark brown and a light tan. So absolutely beautiful colors. And you can see the difference between guys and girls <laughs> so yeah um, it will take some time to get it done I have one more of these and that'll be three pairs of socks complete and then I have two more pairs I have to get complete in time for Christmas and I'm thinking with the next one what I'm gonna do I have to move something it's starting to annoy me I think what I'm gonna do with the next one when I work my socks I work them on my high high my little tiny circular needles and most of the sock is done on that except for the heel I actually work the heel part on DPNs while the high high holds the rest of the stitches and then I work the toe itself on an extra long circular needle so when it comes to turning it inside out to do the three needle bind off that I like to do on my socks because me and the hurt the Kitchener stitch do not get along at all um, it's a lot easier to turn it inside out to do the bind off than to fight with the stiffness of the DPNs. So what I'm thinking for the next two pairs of socks, I'm going to try it with the next pair, see how it works out, is to actually, since I'm using two separate balls of yarn, I'm going to cast on one of the socks on one of the needles and do the ribbing up here. Then I'm going to jump over and I'm going to cast on the next sock and do the ribbing on the other needle and then do the leg of that sock, jump over, do the leg on the other one, go in, do the heel, jump over, do the heel, then do the foot, go back, do the foot, and then the toe, and then jump back over and do the toe. So I kind of have two socks going at once. <laughs> Um, I know there are people out there that are going to say, you know, you can do two at a time on an extra long VPN and all that. I do not have the skills at this point in time, and I don't want to practice those skills on socks that I have to get done as quick as possible. I know I could probably do it. I could probably just go ahead and say, okay, let me just start out, you know, 
on this because when it comes to like the magic loop method my biggest problem is I can start my socks or whatever on another set of needles and then switch over to the long needles for the magic loop method but for some reason I cannot get them started just straight up magic loop method I always have this big huge gap no matter what I try and do so if anybody has any suggestions that would be fine but yeah you know maybe one of these days I will do a two pairs of socks at one time you never know so anyway um two more pairs after one more sock here that'll give me five pairs of socks and that's all I really have to get done for Christmas itself. I have a couple other things that I plan on for other people for Christmas. One won't take me that long because it's a crochet project. The other one will take me a little bit of time but not really that long. And the other one I still have to draft a pattern for. So those will be things that you will not see until after Christmas but I'm hoping to be able to get them done and out to the recipients as close to Christmas as possible, but there's probably going to be a guarantee it will be arriving after Christmas. But it'll be a nice little surprise because Christmas will be over and wow, lo and behold, here will come this nice little package in the mail. So <laughs> anyway, um, last thing I have to share with you because this video is already going to be long enough is an early Christmas present I got from my daughter. She asked me what I wanted, and I kind of envy Miss Erin, who has this nice spinning wheel, and she's shown in some of her videos, you know, fiber that she's spun. And I actually, for her birthday, bought her some fiber so that she could spin that up when she feels that she's ready to. And I said, you know, I can't afford a spinning wheel, but there are things known as drop spindles, and I've watched a few videos, and checked into a few things and they say that the top whirl drop spindle is the best one to start learning on so my daughter asked what I wanted and I said well maybe I'd like one of those and we went looking and for a really good price from Walnut Designs we were able to Walnut Farm Designs excuse me we were able to get the spindle with some instructions and in the instructions though they're brief she gives you links to YouTube videos that she suggests watching to help learn how to do the drop spindle technique and you also get an absolutely beautiful bit of fiber in there and this is merino absolutely gorgeous gorgeous fiber I love the colors I really hope you can see them we all know that purple usually looks brown or it looks blue but there is purple, there is a little bit of like a creamy yellow, there's green, there's blue, just absolutely gorgeous colors. It's so, so soft, you know. So, but I was talking to Miss Erin this morning and I said, you know, I don't want to ruin this fiber by learning on it. So, I had purchased some time ago, oh, and by the way, here's the spindle. <laughs> Um, so it'll be interesting, but I had spoken to her and some time ago I had purchased this. It is roving wool. It is 100% wool. I purchased it for 97 cents a skein at um, Joanne's a long time ago. I was going to make a hedgehog out of it, but I would not have enough. And I can't purchase this anymore at our Joann's. And I am not going to spend, I'm sure, if you can still buy it, the small fortune they want in the store or online. So I decided to ask her if it would be possible to use this. And she said, "As long, I can probably redraft it. It doesn't have a tight twist on it at all. It's got a very light twist to it. In fact, the end isn't even spun as you can see so she said I could probably possibly redraft it and just for practicing purposes this would probably be okay she also suggested a website um, a store on Etsy I want to say it was Friends of Fiber that she suggested Falkland Fiber she said that would be a really good choice because she found for her first really successful spinning on her wheel she used that fiber and it worked great so you may in the very near future be seeing yours truly trying to spin some yarn <laughs> 
not going to guarantee it, but I am going to do my utmost best to take the time and practice, practice, practice. And for 97 cents a skein, if I practice, 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 I've got plenty to practice on. So anyway, video's long enough. I'm already at almost 15 minutes. So I am going to call it quits. Um, in fact, this will probably be over 15 minutes by the time I'm done. Anyway, uh, that being said, <laughs> I look forward to watching everyone's videos. I hope you have a wonderfully crafty week and a wonderfully crafty weekend. As for me, I'm out. As for you, it's good morning, good afternoon, good evening, good day, whatever it is. I really do hope it's a great one, and I will see you all next week. Bye!